Welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. Last night on this show, we told you about what may be the single most extreme and disruptive piece of legislation ever to gain widespread support in the Congress in the history of this country. It's called the New Way Forward Act. It's before Congress right now and has been for almost two months. And yet so far, it has been essentially ignored by the country's major media outlets, which are either too embarrassed of it or too ignorant to cover it. That's a disservice to you because it's really impossible to describe just how radical this bill is. If passed, it would remake our immigration system for the express purpose of helping foreign-born criminals live here. The bill would allow people who've committed serious felonies in other countries to move to the United States legally. It would make it nearly impossible for federal immigration officials to detain immigrants, no matter how potentially dangerous they are. And perhaps most infuriatingly and remarkably, it would require taxpayers to transport deported criminals back into the United States. In other words, you break our laws, you hurt our people, we'll send you a plane ticket. We'll pay for you to come back. It's utter and total insanity. And yet it's very popular in the Democratic Party. So far, this bill has 44 Democratic co-sponsors. On the screen is a list of some of their names. Some of these people you've heard of before, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, Ilhan Omar, Rashida Tlaib, they're celebrities, but some are obscure. Earl Blumenau, for example, has represented Oregon for decades. Before this, he's maybe been best known for running the Congressional Bicycle Caucus. And yet, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, Blumenauer has decided to wreck the country. Now, we'd like to talk to Earl Blumenauer on this show. We'd like to hear why he supports this bill. We'd like to talk to any of the people who've co-sponsored it. We, re we reached out to many of them today to come on and defend their views. But not one of them agreed to come. Why? Because they're cowards. And yet, we think you ought to know what they're doing. Here's the bill's primary sponsor, Jesus Garcia of Illinois, after introducing the bill. Garcia said this. This is not a radical project. We are simply asking for a fair shot and the opportunity for immigrants to stay in the country they call home. A new way forward does just that. It would end mandatory immigration detention, end the automatic pipeline to deportation through the criminal justice system. It would end deportation for people who have had contact with the criminal legal system. It would end the practices of local police engaging in immigration enforcement and the increased ever policing of communities of color. It would decriminalize immigration. This is not a radical project. Of course, the opposite is true. The bill is completely radical. It would transform America into a place you don't recognize. Many of the sponsors of this bill come from the fringes of the Democratic Party, as you would expect, but not all of them do. Consider Congressman Andy Levin. Levin represents the suburbs north of Detroit. Levin's district leans blue, but it's still essentially bipartisan. Voters there went for Hillary Clinton, for example, by just eight points. So there's no chance a majority of Andy Levin's voters want to send plane tickets to armed robbers in Guatemala so they can move next door. And in fact, nobody wants that, no matter what they claim on Twitter. Yet Levin is trying to do that right now. And that's what's scary about this bill. It's happening in the dark. No one's talking about it. Those who are dismiss it as unlikely. It'll never happen. And that's a mistake. Things change fast in modern America. On issue after issue, from ending the Second Amendment to banning biological gender to the open and aggressive racism of identity politics, yesterday's extremism has become today's Democratic Party platform. That's how it works now. Four years ago, when Bernie Sanders mounted his first campaign for president, Vox.com pressed him on why he didn't back open borders for the world. Sanders responded this way, quote, no, that's a Koch brothers proposal, which says essentially there is no United States. It would make everybody in America poor, end quote. Of course, Sanders was entirely right. And for that crime, he was savaged by Vox and all the other angry children in wokedom. Resisting the abolition of the United States was, in their view, needless to say, proof that Sanders was a hardened bigot, a racist. Four years later, Sanders has become obedient. His new platform contains all the usual open borders rhetoric, ending all deportations, abolishing ICE, giving a blanket amnesty to all illegal aliens in the country. Now, a New Hampshire voter recently asked Sanders why his views had changed so radically. The man who once called lax immigration enforcement a Koch brothers conspiracy just four years ago 
suddenly sounded very much like a Koch brother himself. We have 11 million undocumented here. Many of those workers, by the way, are being exploited right now. You know, Trump wants to throw everybody out of the country. If he threw out people out of the country, the price of food in this country would skyrocket. Who do you think is picking the crops and planting all over this country? Who's picking the crops? Actually, machines are picking most of the crops in this country now and planting them too. Bernie's almost 80 years old and apparently nobody told him that. But either way, it is still shocking to hear that explanation from a self-described socialist. So yes, workers are being exploited, but think about what avocados would cost if citizens had to pick them. It's nauseating. Now, Sanders isn't stupid. He has to know his party's turn on immigration hurts workers and the country, but he desperately wants to be president of the United States. So he goes along with it. You're seeing quite a bit of this, by the way. Joe Biden, who's supposedly the most moderate man in politics, old Uncle Joe, now is pushing for illegal aliens to get off on DUIs. Watch. You only arrest for the purpose of dealing with a felony that's committed, and I don't count drunk driving as a felony. The confused ravings of a fading old man? No, hardly. They all think that way now. If Democrats win the 2020 election, some version of the New Way Forward Act will likely become law. Once again, keep this in mind, things move fast in this country, so be ready.